So we're going to look at the first lesson, which was the gift of faith over in Matthews 21, 18 through 22. And I encourage you, if you have a piece of paper, put it in your phone. You can always go back. Because in this week, we're going to need the lessons of the Lord. This is the very, very, I think, strongest area of Christ's ministry on earth. Because it was a time of preparation for what was to come and prepare us also for the end times. The gift of faith, Matthews 21, 18 through 22. Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaf only, and said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith, and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. That was the lesson of the gift of faith. When you pray, believe. Line up with your prayer. I can't stress that enough. I can't say that enough. Every time I get the opportunity to teach on prayer, line up with what your request is. And believe. It's in God's time. Not in our time, but you have to believe that God is faithful. He is just. He will not renege on his word. If it pleased him to say it, it shall accomplish where he sent it out to do. And so the lesson operated in the gift of faith. Believe. And when he gives you some instructions to do something, move. Because he's telling you to do it. But you got to know that you know that you know down in your spirit that it is him. And anytime God tells us to do anything, he's going to back it up by the word. Now, if it ain't backed up by the word, I need you to question what you heard. Because it's going to be backed up by the word of God. God will always confirm what he said by his word. So that's one of the lessons after he came into the city. He cleansed the temple as well. But he had me to focus on these particular lessons. The next lesson that he taught was on obedience. In the same chapter, verses 28, and it goes through the 46th verse, but I'm just going to read portions because it's two different parables but the same lesson verse 28 says but think but what did you a certain man had two sons and he came to the first and said son go work today in my vineyard how many of us are getting some daily assignments from the Lord to do something he talked to us daily we have our same routine that we do, but if you begin to ask the Lord what you want me to do for the kingdom today, don't ask him at 9 o'clock at night, come in, in, the, in your morning, but ask him. He answered and said, I will not, but afterward he repented and went. I can talk about me right now. Sometimes the Holy Spirit can put in my, can tell me, oh, you got to do this today. And I'm talking to the Holy Spirit like I'm talking to you. What? Now I'm just going to sit. I ain't going to do that. The Holy Spirit says, this is what you're doing today. 
lifetime. I surrender and I repent. I ain't, I ain't crazy. All right. Verse 30 says, and he came to the second and said, likewise, and he answered and said, I go serve and went not. When we commit ourselves unto God and when we say that we're going to be obedient to his will, then when he gives us instructions, he expects us to be obedient. Uh -huh. It is better if you don't feel like it, ask the Holy Spirit to give you strength, a refreshing, a renewal. Do not commit yourself and say yes when you know you have no intention on doing the thing. Right. Now, if you need some help with doing it, God know that too. Yeah. Amen. He's testing your obedience. Yes. And the enemy is watching your response. Amen. And so, when we try to bind the hands of the enemy, you know why he's not moving? Because he already know you ain't obedient. You didn't do the other things of the will of God. So what you finding? You can't even be obedient. So he's not going to move. Because he already knows that if God tells you to go into prayer, if God says pick up the word, if he says to go here and go there, we're not going to go. And so the enemy really knows you ain't got nothing to fight with. Because he said, well, God told him to do something. See, here's how it works. There's somebody over here that needs deliverance. Wow. And God can tell us to go hug them, speak a word, bless them, and we won't do it. Right. And so the enemy is over there next to the person who needs deliverance. He knows you're supposed to come. Wow. He knows you got those instructions as well. So guess what? When you don't come, that person is yet in bondage. But that blood is still on your hands. Oh, You're held accountable. And so the enemy is over there saying, you ain't going to get delivered today. Breakthrough ain't coming today. Because that vessel that was supposed to come is disobedient. Verse 31 says, Whither of them Twan did the will of his father? They said unto him the first, Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. Obedience. It's a very, very valuable lesson. The second parable goes into the husband man. This is going to go into what are you doing with God's word? Where are you sowing his word? Sometimes we think because we sowed an offering, uh, we sowed our time, that, oh, that was good, and that's going to get me into heaven. But he want to know what you did with his word. Because it is the word and the anointing on the word that is going to destroy the yoke. Yeah. Favor carries more weight than money. All right. And if our hearts are not in the right place, then the time that we give is wasted time because we're actually hindering in the spirit. Although we act like we folded some paper, you really hinder it in the spirit because in the inner man you're saying, I wish they hurry up, I got stuff to do. Well, if that was your agenda, you might as well should have stayed home. The lesson of obedience. So what am I doing with his word? Uh, I'm not supposed to take his word and keep it to myself and bury it. I'm supposed to take his word and after I get a revelation and after I apply it to my life and after I begin to walk therein, then I am supposed to sow it. Yeah. Obedience. Mm -hmm. As we've gone over to the 22nd chapter, see how these lessons roll in? And oftentimes we minister these words without realizing the importance of when they were taught during his last week. There were some things he could not give beforehand. This is that week. And so as Jesus came into the city, 
And they were saying, Hosanna. They were welcoming him. As he is here, are we really going to welcome him into our hearts? But when we hear others deny him, are we going to deny him too? Because if you're really going to walk with him, you just can't deny him that quickly. If you're really going to see him as your Lord and Savior, you just can't break away from him so easily. And so my guess has to be more than just words that I say from my lips. The word of the soul says my soul says yes. So when he came into the city, some were excited to see him because they heard about what he had done. Some had got a revelation that this really is the Messiah. Some got a revelation of just who was coming in. And many said, who is this? <laughs> Have you ever come to the reality to say, who is this? This. When he really blesses you and when he really opens your eyes, then you begin to say, who is this? I thought that I could not get out of this situation, but I called upon the Lord in the day of trouble, and he heard me, and he delivered me. Who is this? I have tried to do it my way. I called on my mom and my daddy. I looked to my sister and my brother. Because the day that you hear his voice, 
today might be your day. So if you skip, because the enemy might say, well, you know you went to the club last night and, and you know you ought to be shamed. Guess what? He came for my shame. He came for all of that. He came to cleanse me and to clean me. So he came for that. He came for my imperfections. He came for my lack of knowledge. He came for all of that. He came for my blinded eyes. He came for my deaf ears. He came for my hardened heart. He came for all of that. So come on anyway. Come on. Oh, my skirt a little tight. Come on anyway. Oh, come on anyway. I, I, come on, come on anyway. Come on anyway. Come on anyway. Just come on. Come on, on anyway. Because he came into the city. Yeah. So come on anyway. Come on. He'll meet your need when you get there. Come on anyway. I don't have enough to give in the offering. Come on anyway. Yeah. He's after your heart. Come on. So come on anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you going to church? Yes. Because I got a need that no man can meet. Come on anyway. Come on. Come on. You in a relationship and you know it ain't pleasing unto the God with streets in heaven. Come on anyway. Come on anyway. Because if, if it's not for you, he's going to give you a plan on how to get out of it. See, if you keep coming into the presence of the Lord, that relationship, and I'm not just talking about boyfriend and girlfriend, I'm not just talking about fornication or adultery, I'm talking about some relationships that are not cold according to his will. You keep coming, and guess what? That relationship that is not meant by God, it will begin to fall away on its own. You don't have to say, leave me. You don't have to go pack up your clothes or, or shut down your Facebook or change your phone number. Before you know it, they will leave you. Amen. So keep coming. Amen. Keep coming. Yes. Because he's in the city. Amen. And he came for you and I. Yes. The marriage dinner over in Matthew 22. It says, and Jesus answered and spake unto them again by the parables. See, he taught by parables. Amen. He made the carnal things relatable. There's no need to talk over your head. All right. And there's no need to talk under you. Amen. Jesus came to meet a need. Yeah. So he met the people where they were. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bid to the wedding and they would not come. All right. And again he sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden, behold I prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready, come into the marriage. Uh -huh. But they made light of it. And went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the raven took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Whenever God sends you on an assignment, I'm talking to those who are called to go out on their assignments. Know that enemy don't want them to hear that word. All right. Amen. But you will you be obedient. Amen. In season and out of season. Yeah. Do it in love. Give the word and move on. But when the king heard thereof, he was rough and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready. Guess what? We can't stop the things of God. Amen. Once again, he said his word will not return unto him void. Amen. It will accomplish that which he sent it out to do. Yes. And so if we don't do it, it's still going to go forth. Amen. If they don't want to hear it, guess what? He'll send somebody else to tell them. Yes. God's word will not return unto him void. And so if he sent the word to say, get your house in order, yes. he's going to keep sending it. Yes. Thank you. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready. Mm -hmm. Today is ready. But they which were bidden were not worthy. Okay. Go ye therefore into the highways and, 
as many as ye shall find dead to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found. Both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. This is spiritual dress. And he said unto him, Friend, how came his thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servant, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Spiritually dressed means that when you do, when, listen, don't decide to go out on your own assignment. That's what they're saying. Amen. Don't decide to go on your own assignment. All right. Wait for the Holy Spirit yeah. Yeah. to instruct you. Because if you decide to go on your own assignment, well, I'm just going to call her and tell her, thus says the Lord. Well, that opportunity time might not have been that moment. And so your word won't be received. You get up and run over there and lay your hands on somebody if you want to, and you're not spiritually dressed and consecrated, that demon will eat you alive. Lay your hands suddenly on no man. Be properly spiritually dressed. What is properly spiritually dressed? Being in the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. And wait on your calling. <clears throat> We're still in chapter 22, over in 34 through 46, and I'm not going to read all of that, but this is another lesson, the greatest commandment. See all these lessons. And so sometimes we look at that last week as doom. But every day God is yet teaching. He's yet teaching us. Every day, can you imagine that he knew he came into the city and it was going to be his last week on earth. And he did not renege on teaching. What does that say to us? If, if we're really going to be followers after Christ, if we're really going to follow his example, that is saying, guess what, come hell or high water, when he gives me a word, I got to give the word. It has nothing to do with me. It doesn't have anything to do with how I feel or if it's raining outside or if it's cold outside. It does not have anything to do with that. Listen, put on a jacket. Take off some of those layers. Get a raincoat. Put on some snow boots. Do what God told you to do in season and out of season. Ain't nobody going to be there. You, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is there. He says, speak to one as you're speaking to a thousand. Yeah. What? If you don't, what you trying to say? You ain't nobody? Ain't nobody going to be there. Well, who are you? Be a vessel unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Spiritually dressed. Yes. Hallelujah. You ain't got nothing to do with me. And every day you're not going to feel so highly anointed. Glory. Uh-uh. That flesh don't, I don't feel like it. Come on. Oh, but Holy Spirit, revive me, renew me. God, what you want to say to your people? Because personally, I don't have anything to say. But God has plenty to say. The greatest commandment it says, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now, first of all, stop playing with Jesus. Stop playing with the Holy Spirit. You sure you want me to do that? The enemy ain't gonna tell you to go and love somebody, tell them. Don't give them no scripture. Amen. I heard the Holy Spirit say, text them this scripture, but I ain't, uh uh. They don't wanna hear no word. That might be the devil. The devil ain't gonna tell you to send nobody no word. Amen. Don't test Jesus. He was so humble. 
but mighty in power. So a lawyer, you know, they say the lawyers are, are cunning and crafty and, and scheming on how to get out of something, but we serve a God that sits high and looks low, and, and after all, he's talking to the word. He's talking to the one who crafted his mind and developed his mind to even learn about the legal system. So that's just like concrete asking the builder, how did you build me? You sure what you put in me gonna work? I built you! Hallelujah. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Because what Moses taught routed us back to God. The prophet said, thus says who? The Lord my God. It all goes back to God. Now, the next lesson, I found this intriguing. Over in Matthew 23, 1 through 35. This section is to the Pharisees and the scribes, hypocrites. Do you not know that there were seven woes in this? Seven woes, seven warnings. He warns us. I'm not going to read all of them. He says, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Uh -huh. I ain't gonna praise him and I don't want you to praise him either. Come on, come on. I ain't gonna clap my hands and I'm gonna look at you and ask you why you clapping your hands. Yeah. You going to church? Yeah, I'm going, I don't know. Um, I don't think I'm gonna go. You sure you wanna go? Oh, you hypocrite. And if they fight you and say, I'm going anyway, you had a nerve to say, pray for me? <laughs> Girl, pray for me, I'm going through. But you don't want to go to the house of the Lord. You going to Bible study? Uh-uh. Well, what do they talk about? Girl, take notes for me. So I can keep caught up with what they said in Bible study. But you don't want to come. <laughs> he says unto him, he says, For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against me, and for ye need to go in yourselves. You won't go, but you don't want nobody else to go. Girl, you know, I just done decided to give up going to the club. I ain't going no more. Please go with me one more time. I don't ask you no more. This is the last time I'm going to ask you to go with me. I know it ain't good for us, but this is the last time. And they make it sound so convincing. And then they go ahead and tell you what to wear. You know that thing would be good on you the last time we went. Why don't you go ahead and try to make it look all good and purity? But God is calling you out of some things. So you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, but you won't, and you won't even go in talking against the church. We're the church, not this structured building. This is called the sanctuary, but we're the church. We're the temple. There were seven woes in there. Another one says, Warn to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a, 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 a presence, make long prayer. Yeah. Therefore, ye shall receive the greater damnation. Hey, let me move on. You ain't going over there to hell, man. You just went over there to say you went. I'm going to move on. It's seven woes in there. 
You know why we're in bed and hungry? Because you want that two, I ain't gonna give you five minutes. You want that two seconds of acknowledgement. What do you know somebody to say, oh, that was good, and pat you on the back, but guess what? I just came out and bust your bubble. Pat yourself on the back because ain't nobody coming. Like you, I went and took my mama some food. Food, good. You should have did that. Why anybody got to know about it? You done took a picture of helping somebody cross the street, and everybody know about it. Let's move on. Seven walls. Seven walls. Number six is preparation, knowledge, warning about the end times. That's over in Matthew 24, 1 through 28. During this time, Jesus was pouring out so much. He was preparing his disciples. He even gave warning to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And yet he knew that he was going to die on this side, the flesh, not the spirit. So can you imagine giving somebody some good words, some good teaching, and we kind of talked about it in Sunday school this morning, knowing that they inwardly plotting against you. But I'm going to give you this word anyway. It says that Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to the afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And so when we hear about individuals, and it's been in history, I haven't heard it in a while, coming to say, Jesus is gonna return on this date, this time. No one knows but the Father. He even got to go release that to Jesus. Jesus said, I don't even know when he gonna tell me to return. So don't be deceived. I think a couple of years ago, I saw somebody, I laughed so hard, uh, they were selling tickets to heaven. And they actually sold some tickets, they did. Don't let me deceive you. This is why we encourage you, pick up the word of God for yourself. Read it. Read a portion at a time. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you a revelation of what you are reading. Don't try to take in a whole bunch of word. Read a little bit until your appetite expands, until you can digest more. But for the time being, listen, if you got to stay on John 3.16 for six months, stay there until you get a revelation, until you get an understanding. Until you feel the Holy Spirit prompting you to go and read verse 17. But if you gotta open up your Bible and stare at it and go sit back down, come back to it and read that same scripture. Listen, I don't care who's telling you, you need to read more, you need to do more. You stay where your appetite can handle. Come on. Don't let nobody force you 
to digest something you can't handle yet. Amen. Because it'll turn your stomach and then you won't read it all. Come on. Don't be deceived. Don't allow somebody to come and tell you what a model Christian should be. Measure yourself against what God says. Right. If you are one that operates in one of the ministry gifts, yes, we have examples. Yes, we can admire the anointing, but it is the Holy Spirit that gives us yeah. how we're supposed to walk. Because it is his anointing that releases in us to operate in that anointing. You mess around and go ahead and copy somebody if you want to. And no demon in hell is going to move. No chain is going to be broken. No blinded eye will be opened. Why? Because that is not your anointing. You didn't work for that anointing. You didn't labor for that anointing. You didn't get in the word for that anointing. So you can't walk in that anointing. Don't let man deceive you. Uh-uh. Don't let him deceive you. Uh-uh. Get in the word. You got to know the word for yourself. And if you have some questions, listen, you might not want to raise your hand and ask questions. Write them down. Pass it over. That's between you and the person you passed it over. And pass it to some, listen, if they ain't in the word even, don't be sending your questions over there. Amen. They don't know either. We all have to go to the Lord. Don't get me wrong. But if you know that y'all watching TV together for the same six hours, and you got a spiritual question, don't pass your question over there. Because they're watching TV with you. They ain't in the word. Go to a place where you can get an answer. But I'm going to tell you the number one place is the Holy Spirit. So there was a warning about end times. Not to be deceived. Many will rise in this day with false teachings that have no foundation. That will not lead you to the word of God. If the teaching that you're receiving does not connect with the word of God, examine that teaching. Examine that teacher. Well, what is your word leading me back to? Is the bottom line that you need some money? What about my soul being fed? What about me being delivered, healed, and set free? What about my children coming out of some mess? What is it leading to? Because if it's for your building fund, I'm going to tell you to go to work. If it's to help you get to Africa, if that's God's vision, he's going to provide the provision. He got somebody already set up who's going to pour into that particular vision. But if you only want me to come and get a word, and, and that's the bottom line, to get some money. And then when you see I don't give no money, then you no longer invite me, then that tells me your motive. What about my soul? All right. So let us pay attention in these times. What it is that we are connected to. Is it leading me that I have a secure place in that last day? Because he says in his word that even some of the very elect don't get fooled. Because their eyes are in the wrong place. The seventh lesson is found over in John. 14, 15 through 26. This particular lesson was about the preparation knowledge of the coming of the Holy Spirit. In order for the Holy Spirit to be released, Christ had to return back to heaven. And so this week, as, as I was studying this, I have markers in my Bible in every book that I have on this week. I'm going from Matthew, Luke, John, Mark, the books, all about this week. God, what did you teach this week? And each book gives their own account. John talks about the preparation knowledge of the Holy Spirit, of the coming of the Holy Spirit. And it reads as follows. At that 
the 15th verse that says, If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knowing him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He was preparing them for greater. Yeah. I gotta go. But before I go, I'm gonna prepare you for greater. Yeah. I'm not gonna leave you wanting. I'm not gonna leave you wondering, what do I do next? Before I go, and I know it's almost time for me to go, I'm gonna prepare you for greater. Jesus came into the city. He came with a purpose. Oh, he came to give up his life, but he came to prepare those he loved. I gotta go. But before I go, I want you properly dressed. I want you to know what's coming. I want you to see those wolves that are coming in sheep clothing. I want you to know the difference between a lie and the truth. I want you to know that I am sending from the Father, the Holy Spirit. And guess what? That's that greater because he's coming with some gifts. He's coming with some spiritual gifts. He's coming with the fruit of the Spirit. He's coming with the ministry gifts. He's coming for greater. So I gotta go. I know you don't understand when I say I gotta go. But I gotta go and, and, and I gotta go because it's gonna benefit you. I gotta go. Because I, I need to go into the next area of ministry. That was his ascension. To go and sit on the right hand of the Father. But when she shall come to judge the quick and the dead, he had to go. He didn't come on the earth to stay. You know one thing about the word? The word is powerful and it is action. The word comes to do some stuff. A word is not released just to stay stagnant. A word comes to move some stuff. A word is released to give a healing. A word is given. It is to permeate the minds. It is to convict. It is to humble. It is also to give authority and power. The word came to do something. It did not come to stand still. It did not come just to be idle. The word came to do something. Yeah. And it didn't come to stay. Faith come by hearing and hearing come by the word of God. Faith came to do something. The word came to do something. It did not come to stay and remain. And so when God tells you to do something, that is known as the word. Don't stay on the word. Begin to get up and move in the word. Because the word got to go and do some stuff. The word got to go and break up some ground. There is anointing on the word that got to loose some chains. There is something on that word that's going to deliver me, that is going to set me free. There is something on the word. Don't let the word come and die. The word came to live, but it has an appointed time of life on this side. And as you let the word do what it's supposed to do, then another word will come unto you. So what are you doing with my word? What are you doing? Let the word do what it's supposed to do. It came. It did. And guess what? It prepares you for a greater. The next lesson. Talking about his unexpected return. Being faithful until he returns. I'm not going to go over there. That's found in Matthews. 24 36 through 51 as well as the 25th chapter first through the 30th verse that lesson is about his unexpected return being faithful until he come back that's about the five wise and the five foolish faithful till he return you can't hear about it getting ready to return and listen if you in there stay in there Stay prepared. Stop dodging in and out. He gonna wait for me to come back. No, he's not. Uh huh. Because as you can see, when they came back, those doors were shut. 
Number nine, the lesson on judgment. That scripture text is found over in Matthews 25, 31 through 46. And my last lesson, I will go to this one because this is all where we need to be. The lesson on humility. John 13, 14 through 20. There's something that I want to read out of this that when we consider our part in Jesus, what he came to do to cleanse us, and if we will not allow him to cleanse us, then we have no part with him. Verse 7 well, let, let me back up. Verse 4 says, He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then coming to he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, do as thou wash my feet. He wasn't rejecting Jesus. He was saying, you are master. You are my teacher. And you mean you're going to serve me? Well, those who operate in spiritual gifts and ministry gifts, guess what? That is to serve. All right. Not be served. Yeah. You, you accept that call. It is to serve. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Yeah. You'll know that Jesus came to serve. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part in me. At that I'm going to ask you to stand. Everyone stand upon your feet. And we're going to do a universal prayer. If you have a special need, then by all means, I'm going to ask you to come up the middle aisle, and we will touch and agree with you. But the first portion of this prayer is universal. Everyone bow your heads, because I don't want you looking at nobody. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you, Lord God, as a humble servant. And I present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. I ask you right now that if you would forgive me of my sins and my trespasses, the things that I have done to neglect your will, the things that I have done, Lord God, even against your little children, all things, I ask that you would forgive me. I ask you, Lord God, right now to wash me and cleanse me yeah. of all unrighteousness. Yeah. Oh God, the stench of sin and the filthiness Hallelujah. that is trying to stay attached to yeah. me. Cleanse my mind cleanse me. and wash my heart. Oh, yeah. Purify even oh, my words. Yeah. Thank you. Oh God, oh, the direction of my feet. Hallelujah. Even where I place my hands Wash me, Lord, Wash me. in your blood, that I may be clean. Yes, oh, God, wash us, Wash. that we may have part in you. Hallelujah. I believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth yes, Lord. that you are Lord. You are, you are my Savior. Yes, yes. God is my Father, yes, yes. and the Holy Spirit is my God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, yes, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, uh -huh. holy and acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. Yes. And be ye transformed oh, by the renewal of your mind. Yes, yes. Take me in the word of God. Yes, Lord. I pray this prayer <laughs> over this your people. Hallelujah. I ask of the Father in the name of 
of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Now, is there anybody who had a special need of prayer? Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask for assistance. Praise the Lord. From the pool.
other preachers around me. It was a big old, I mean, it was, it was a big church, like a cathedral or something. Amen. And, and, I, and I was telling the people, you know, and, and all of a sudden, we had a herd of that sinners begin to overshadow the church. And they began to come in, they began to sit down, and, and the Spirit of God was heavy in there. And the people were shouting, they were praising God, amen, and they were, amen, just giving God the glory, amen. amen. And, and all of a sudden, some of these Christians, supposed to be, supposed to be Christians, amen, some of them I recognized, was in the midst with the big hats on, the, 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 the suit and everything, but the heels, they got their pocketbook and got their, I can't stand this here. They ain't gonna come and tell them here, set the side me and smell it and all this here. Amen. I said, leave them alone. Amen. But I want you to know, amen, during that church service, amen, most of all of those sinners got saved. Huh? Amen. And the Holy Spirit said, that's the church. That's the church. And this is what's going on today. The, 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 the unsaved folks are going to start coming in the church. And the one that some of the so-called Christians, they're going to get upset because God is using them. It's, it's God is cleaning them up. Amen. And using them for the glory of God. We thank God. Amen. I want to say I thank each and every one for your prayers. I thank you for your finances. Those that helped me to, on my journey down here in Georgia. We thank God for you. Amen. I, I want to thank uh, Evangelist. I want to thank you for something you did. I'm almost done with it. Something that you did, you sold me into what I was doing over there in Africa. Amen. I'm almost done. Amen. Like, it was in my spirit. I just wanted to thank you. You know what it was. Amen. I know what it was. But I want to thank you for you sowing into the ministry. Amen. Over in Africa, something I told you. That I was doing over there with the land, Amen. it's almost paid for now. Yes. Amen. Amen. All of us, it's been a struggle, yes. but it's almost paid for now. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I just want to thank you personally. Yes. Amen. For what you've done. Yes. Amen. And thank, yes. Amen. Some of the others, a few other people help. Amen. We thank God. Thank God for every one of you. Amen. Thank God. Amen. And thank God I'm back home. Amen. Amen. Don't know how I'm gonna be here. Yes. I'm here. Amen. Amen. And even when I'm not here, amen, all of you are in my heart. Amen. And I'm praying for you. Amen. What do you think now? Amen. If you come on the prayer line, you hear me calling out some of your names. Amen. amen. Because I call out the name. Amen. And I call out the name, and everybody's other prayer for you, they hear it, and they call out the name. Don't even know you. Amen. 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 So this is what's going on. We thank God for you. Thank God for my daughter. Amen. Coming today. Amen. And I know you were blessed. Amen. amen. Because I was blessed just by seeing you blessed. Amen. We'll talk later. Amen. That's my spiritual daughter back there. Yes. Amen. 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 She told me she was coming. I invited her. Amen. 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 I, I, I didn't say nothing to the pastor. Amen. I ain't talked to her nothing about you. Amen. Amen. But the word. I told you if you come, Amen. it might just be, if it ain't for one word, Amen. I guarantee you you'll get something. And I've seen the Holy Spirit. See, you got something. Amen. Amen. That everybody don't get back like there. Otherwise, nobody can to lay hands on you. But the Holy Ghost told all those they take. Yes, Woo! Yes, God, yes, my God. Yes, the yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, the woman of God was preaching, yes, talking, yes, amen, and just was releasing yes, what was inside yes, of her. Yes, amen. Spirit. Yes, See, that's what it's all about. Yes, See, y'all got to get out of the way when somebody comes lay hands on you, clap and act. Yes, amen. You got to move when the move of God is going on. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. When the water is up, amen, you got to step in the water. Ain't nobody going to put you in the water. They didn't put the other body, the lame man in the water. They were in an yeah. Amen. But Jesus came back. Yeah. Amen. And the Holy Spirit showed up. Yes, and then we thank God. Thank God. Yes, you preach a good message. Amen. A teaching message. Amen. Read it. Yes. Amen. It's going to help you. Yes. And I want to say this to you, Mr. Thomas. Yes. I said, there, look, there, you still in the same spot back there holding that wall up. That wall don't need to hold up. I release you. Yes, and I told you that. Now, you got to release yourself. Yes, Whatever it is that's holding you back, yes, that won't allow you to go forth and do what God told you to do, you got to lay that aside. Yes, 
You got to do that. I can't do it for you. But you got to do it. Amen. Don't, you don't want to uh, 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 hear the Lord say, what did you do with what I gave you? Because God has gifted you as well. And he wants you to operate the way he gives you. A lot of fear of God, man, a lot of fear of God just to, just to take over and do what he wants to do in you. Step out of the way and let God get in the way. And do what God called you to do. I'm getting out of my chest because I don't want I, 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 I don't want no blood dripping down my hand. Evangelist Baldwin. Huh? I release you. Huh? Man, you gotta release yourself. Whatever it is that won't allow you to go forth in what God has given you. Huh? You gotta lay it aside. You gotta get that God and always fix it. Huh? So I'm saying that to you. Y'all are God's sheep. I'm not over you. I'm not Lord of you. I can't make you do anything. But my job is to encourage you, teach you, and to instruct you and to nurture you in the Word of God. You've got to obey God if you want to have that real peace that you know that is there and you may have felt it for a long time. You need to get activated. Tell out the credit card. You don't never activate it. It ain't no good to be activated. I went to Walmart not, not too long ago, and I activated mine. So it's good now. I can use it. So what I'm saying to you, you got to activate it. If you really want peace, it's that peace of God that passes all understanding. You got to be obedient to God. You hold it back. A lot of people need, a lot of people need y'all ministry. You minister to people. We a lot the spirit of God to operate in you, you minister to people in your song, in your praise, when you come up here. You don't, you can't tell me that about that. If it wasn't there, I wouldn't be encouraging you. But I'm here to encourage you. To obey God. You know what the woman does, man? Eh? Some of the fifty. Obey it. Humble myself. <laughs> Submit myself to the spirit of God and let God do what he wants to do. I love you. God bless you. Come back next Sunday to Walmart. I'm not pushing you again.